we have to be accurate raj yogis and you see there's a reason why raj yoga is called raj yoga because the most integral part of raj yoga is yoga yes it's not so baba says knowledge is the source of income and the income is attained by yoga so let's say somebody goes to school gets university education also but doesn't put it to use then what use is that knowledge because knowledge is always held as the source of income but only with knowledge, when knowledge is applied can you receive an income and baba says we study every day we study to understand what it is to be a soul we study to understand who is baba what is baba like we study to understand how do i connect my buddhi yoga with baba but the most important aspect is do i remember baba the way i am taught to because the aim is to be pure we always call out to the purifier we say baba you are the purifier come and baba teaches us raj yoga because raj yoga is the method to become pure and baba today says we have to check how much do i consider myself to be a soul and remember baba because many a times you see when children belong to baba they would say i am always in remembrance of baba yes i remember baba anyway but baba says that's just cheating yourself because remembrance is a very uh, what do you say it's a very measured act it's not it's not like you say i am always in remembrance anyway so remembrance has to be accurate and baba says do you consider yourself to be bodiless do you consider yourself to be a soul and remember baba and baba says when you do this you will be so consumed in this remembrance that you will forget your body and the whole world around you and the experience of being in baba's remembrance is very sweet and in that sweetness in that sweet experience of being with baba the everything that's not sweet will be forgotten so you see this body or this physical world or the bodily religions and relationships they are not sweet today so it baba's remembrance will make you forget all of that so do i remember baba in such a way and i was just thinking today you see that um if we if we check baba baba in the murli today also says that in the morning in amrit vela yes you sometimes sit in remembrance and for half an hour maybe you are in good remembrance and you remember me with love and you draw my love into you also but what about the rest of the day so in the morning you see uh sometimes you consider yourself to be a soul that also you have to check <laughs> not everybody is getting up not everybody is doing it well but baba says some children at least in the morning at amrit vela they are getting up and thinking about themselves as a soul and remembering me 
but what about the rest of the day? Now you see, uh, I was just thinking today that during the whole day, how many times do we really unplug our awareness from everything around and come to that state of soul consciousness? Because you see, the soul is in the body, but it is completely separate. And do I take out time during the day to unplug my attention from everything else and just know that I am a soul and think about the soul that I am a soul and I began from the soul world and I have had a whole journey of 84 births and this is just a temporary costume, 84th birth costume. And now I am here to go back to the soul world and to my new world. So do I sit in this soul consciousness? Do I sit in this state where I am, I unplug my attention from the body, bodily religions, bodily relations and the physical world? How many times in the day do you really do that? consider yourself to be a soul because you see most of the times we are fooling ourselves by thinking that I am in Baba's remembrance whereas when you check you will figure out that during the day uh, in the morning maybe in Amrit Vela we are doing that but during the day mostly it is just you know awareness of the physical world and also saying Baba Baba along with that or just thinking that you know Baba is there with me but it is not like you are uh, separating yourself from the body considering yourself to be a soul and then remembering Baba and Baba says that when you don't consider yourself to be a soul when your awareness is scattered in the body and in the physical world then there is no connection and you cannot feel, you cannot experience, you cannot fulfill yourself with the gifts that Baba is giving. And you see Baba is the ocean of peace, ocean of knowledge, ocean of love, ocean of purity. So when I am in the remembrance of Baba what will be my state like? Just think about it. It'll be, it'll be the master ocean of peace, master ocean of knowledge. And I have experienced that even one second, ten seconds of accurate remembrance of Baba can shift your state of mind and intellect, to, you know, drastically. You can, you, you'd start. Uh, you know, your, your intellect starts functioning at a different plane. <laughs> you, start, uh, you start focusing on different things. Your discernment and decision making changes. And uh, when you are in the influence of the old world, your intellect is functioning very differently. Your mind is in a very different state in body consciousness. And as soon as you become soul conscious and remember Baba, your mind is like the mind of Baba. Very peaceful, very silent, very pure, very full of love. So that is the kind of, uh, you know, state you would be in. So Baba says, and in that state, you will not be pulled towards anything. And I remember, you know, there was this one thing which happened some days back. And when that happened, my mind was thinking about that matter. And then I suddenly decided that I just take a break and sit in soul consciousness and remember Baba. And when I remembered Baba and when I was absorbed in Baba's love and peace and purity, at that time and after that also for several hours, I felt like, you know, I cannot think about that trivial matter because I was vibrating at a different plane and in that stage, you don't 
nothing of the old world neither the distraction neither neither the attractions nor the repulsions so you know things that attract you in body consciousness think that repel things that repulse you in body consciousness sometimes you think think about things that are very attractive to you sometimes you think about things that you don't like all of those things will stop pulling you when you have good buddhi yoga with baba and baba says in that state you are absorbed in baba's world and baba's world is a very sublime world where there is just peace purity love joy power so baba says do you in the whole day do this because this is the only method to purify yourself and until and unless you consider yourself to be a soul and remember baba you will not be able to purify yourself and baba says that purity is most important without purity you cannot go back to the soul world because that's a pure world you can, cannot go back to the new world because that's also a pure world and baba underlines the importance of maintaining a chart yes now the thing is uh you know uh, some days back there was this young baba's kanya and she had come to the center and she was telling me that you know didi recently i started uh, maintaining a chart of what i eat and uh, she said that i started maintaining a chart of how many grams of what i ate today <laughs> and then she said you know i was never aware that i am eating 27 20 hundred 2800 calories a day <laughs> and she said i always thought i am eating very little but when i started counting and when i started having a measurement of it then i became aware that i am eating too much and then i started maintaining a you know a chart of it and then correcting myself so uh, you see sometimes when you just just like that when you think about whether you are doing things correctly it is very difficult to find an accurate answer because just like i mentioned about that girl she told me that uh, i maintained a chart of the diet and now i understand that i was eating so much and i was not even aware and similarly you see generally saying that yes i love baba i remember baba and accurately measuring in the last one hour how much time did i really spend in soul consciousness and accurate remembrance of baba this is a different scenario altogether you know just saying that yes i remember baba and maintaining a proper honest chart of whether you are really soul conscious and remembering baba these are two very different things so baba emphasizes the importance of having a diary and pen and these days you have a phone and on it you can always note so every one hour take a break and check you know how much did you remember baba and I remember there is this one kanya she studies so she she is preparing for her civil exams and then she told me that uh, recently didi i have started keeping a stopwatch and then she said that you know whenever i am going to the washroom or having food or i am using the phone or i am distracted at that time i stopped the stopwatch and i i again restart it only when i am remember uh, i am studying so that way when i calculated she told me i was under the impression that i am studying 12 hours but i am only studying 7 and a half she told me and just imagine the difference between 12 hours and 7 and a half it's so huge and 
she said, I always thought that I'm studying for 12 hours because I never calculated these breaks and the distractions and when I'm using the phone and other stuff. And then she said, now I'm trying to uh, increase that seven and a half to 12. So why I'm giving you these examples is saying that I remember Baba and accurately measuring how much you are really remembering Baba, not like you know, remembrance like you're body conscious and you think that I'm remembering Baba because there is also Baba, Baba, the chant of Baba, Baba going inside you. No, the remembrance that Baba talks about where you're completely soul conscious and absorbed in the remembrance of Baba. That is the remembrance that purifies you. That is the remembrance that changes your sanskars. So Baba says you have to maintain a chart of this remembrance every hour and in the end of the day you must you know submit that chart and Baba says those who want to make progress this is the only way to make progress and if you're just taking it casually that yes I'm remembering Baba and yes I was in remembrance so Baba says that is like just treating yourself, fooling yourself and who are you deceiving at the end of the day? Yes, so who are you deceiving or who are you uh, lying to? Because sometimes you see uh, not maintaining a chart, not, not checking is a, is a big form of self-deception because you want to live under the illusion that yes, I'm doing well and I'm remembering Baba. And this is also what Maya does to you. So Baba says you must maintain a chart of how much accurate remembrance you had during the day. And there is a law that says you cannot change without checking. Yes. And I will tell you if you don't check and somebody else points out then you will feel offended. You will, you will not take it as a, you will not take it as an instrument for growth. You will start, you know, hurling insults at that person or just, you know, being body conscious and egoistic and reacting badly. So it is very important that you check for yourself because until and unless you check for yourself honestly, change, what ha change won't happen. And Baba underlines honest checking, honest checking and you see honesty is, honesty stems from wisdom. Yes, let me tell you one thing. If you don't know the traffic rules and you break them and somebody tells you, did you break the traffic rules, then what will you say? No. <laughs> you will say, no, I didn't break it. Why? because you don't know the traffic rules and if you don't know the rules then how can you be honest about whether you broke them or didn't break them. Similarly, when you don't know properly, you know, what is, what is really, what really counts as Baba's remembrance, then because of lack of understanding, because of lack of proper knowledge also, you may be living in the bubble or the illusion that I am remembering Baba. So Baba says you must understand accurately what remembrance is like and then honestly check with full knowledge. Uh, honesty is also, honesty is connected to intention but honesty is also connected to awareness. If you are unaware you can't be honest and I will uh, tell you one incident from Sakar Baba's time. So you see there was this young Kanya with Baba and um, very little Kanya and what she would do is she would wear everybody's frock and dress and move around. And then everybody would say that she is stealing, she is stealing, she is taking my dress and wearing and not seeking permission. So then Mama once called that Kanya and Mama asked, 
whose frock is this that you are wearing? So she said, this belongs to that sister. So she said, uh, so mama asked her, did you ask that sister before taking the frock? So she said, no. So mama told her that if you don't ask her and take it, then it is called stealing. So uh, did you steal? So she said, I didn't know. <laughs> so you see that she is not counting it as stealing because she doesn't know that that is counted as stealing. So then mama made her aware that if you have to use something from somebody, you have to ask them. If you don't ask them, it amounts to stealing. So then that girl was aware and she knew that she doesn't have to steal. So similarly, you see many times when children don't understand or maybe even if you've heard it hundred times in the murli, if you don't pay attention to it, you don't understand what really counts as remembrance. And then what you're doing is, you are just casually saying that I remember Baba, remember Baba. And then you see many, many years later also, children, children will complain that Baba says that, you know, your uh, vikarma will uh, finish and, you know, you will burn your sins and there'll be change in your sanskars, but it's not happening. I am remembering Baba all the time, but that's not happening. But if you look at it, you're not remembering Baba accurately. And I will tell you one thing. Uh, there was this one Mata, she's, been, she's in Gyan for 20 years. And uh, she visited the center and um, she, she came from somewhere else. She goes to some other place and then she told me, Didi, do you really believe that sanskars change? So I said, of course, mine changed. So <laughs> she said, no, I don't believe it. So I said, but how can you say that? Baba is teaching us everything for the change of sanskars and sanskars definitely change. So she said, no, my sanskars have not changed for the last 20 years. <laughs> so I said, your sanskars have not changed because maybe you're not doing it right. Maybe you're not even practicing proper soul consciousness. Maybe you're just think, saying, I'm a soul, I'm a soul in body consciousness. You're not shedding the awareness of the body or bodily relations and religions and sitting even for one minute a day. So how will the sanskars change? So Baba says that it is very important to very accurately check what you're doing. And then there are many things that Baba asks us to check, not just the chart of remembrance, but Baba says check your character during the whole day. Yes, did you give sorrow to anybody? Did you say something inaccurate? Are your words okay? So sometimes you see, we use language in the world. So, uh, so I've seen this one Mata, she keeps using this word, this one is mad and that one is mad and you know, she will just say, ye pagal hai, wo pagal hai. So I've seen this Mata use this word very much, pagal, pagal. So then I once told her, does Baba say you should say, you know, <laughs> you should use this word mad for anybody? So she said, that's a habit. So I said, change it. It's not a good habit. So sometimes, you know, out of habit or maybe under the influence of anger or under the influence of fear or some other thing, you know, you are using words which are not uh, which are not appropriate according to the knowledge. So Baba says that you must check what is the what are the words that you are using. In the last hour, what was the language you used? Was your language inappropriate? Did you give sorrow through your actions? Did you bring everybody closer to Baba through your actions or did you invoke lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed in them. Because you see, whenever 
through your actions you are you are invoking lust anger ego attachment greed in somebody that is taking them away from baba and taking them towards ravan so baba says that you must check your character during the whole day you must check remembrance during the whole day and then baba says you must check how many of your actions were divine and virtuous was your seeing soul conscious was your speaking sweet and knowledgeable was your you know listening appropriate yes so you must check for body conscious activities or virtuous activities also you must think about you know what i did in the last hour was it deity like or was it devil like <laughs> or was it ordinary so that also has to be checked and then baba says how many did you serve in the last one hour so how many did you introduce to god and you see introduction of baba doesn't happen only through words you can introduce them to baba through your godly actions also so you know you can when you wake up in at amrit vela somebody just wakes up with you that's also bringing them closer to baba so just think about how much you're bringing everybody closer to baba and how much you're taking them away from baba so baba says every one hour you have to keep checking for these things because if you don't check you will never be aware and you will be living in this bubble that i am doing well i am a good bk i am baba sweetest child but you're not <laughs> so that is something that baba talks about and then today baba says something very interesting and i found it very very interesting that baba says do not praise anyone unnecessarily yes do not praise anyone unnecessarily because everybody has to make effort and it requires effort to have a fortune you see uh, praise is also a very big instrument of deception and have you seen that in the world there is a lot of false praise and people cannot distinguish between false praise and true praise and people fall into the trap of false praise and you always have this idea that anybody who praises you is good and anybody who corrects you is bad and then people use that instrument to you know keep you not corrected and getting worse and worse and worse so this false praise is also something that baba warns us against and i will tell you one thing so when children come to baba uh so in the beginning there is always you know this love that they get and respect that they get from baba's home so in baba's home there is always an environment where you respect every soul and love every soul and that is something they like because you know in the world there is constant criticism and there is constant conflict and when they come from that environment you like this environment of love and respect but so, so after some time you see when baba gives directions for self improvement and how will baba give directions through the murli and who will read the murli the nimit <laughs> so the nimit teacher will uh, explain the murli to you and give you directions now when those directions are given sometimes you know children are so trapped in this thing that you know baba should always say i'm good i'm good i'm good and not point out at any defects <laughs> that they are not able to stand when some defects are pointed out and when some corrections are given for self progress and you know this is also a very big road block in your progress and so baba tells us that don't don't make anybody used to false praise 
because you see this false praise is very deceptive you so when you say some when you tell somebody you are a very good child of baba then you must check whether they are following baba's disciplines because if they are not following baba's disciplines how are they good child of baba they are just a child of baba <laughs> so when you say you know baba loves you a lot you must check whether he is a sevadhari whether he is a yogi if somebody is not remembering baba doing seva then how do they receive baba's love they cannot so baba says that it's also very important to makes everybody pay attention to what they need to do because just telling them you are doing well when they are not doing well is not going to help and i will tell you uh in my experience there have been times when you know uh, even baba's children are attracted towards those who give false praise and those who don't correct you those who don't guide you better or those who don't give you any indications for self improvement they just keep telling me oh you are you are the greatest you are the best and then you also start loving them more and you also start falling into that trap of false praise but you must understand that anybody who is giving you false praise is deceiving you they are not your well wishers and baba says that when the when baba corrects you uh, when sakar baba was there baba would give corrections through sakar baba now baba gives corrections through the nimit teacher so whenever corrections are given you must understand that this is baba's direction baba says never think the teacher is speaking never think brahma baba is speaking although you know some things will be told by the teacher because maybe you know the teacher is observing you and saying it but always consider that this is being told by shiv baba because only when you think that you know shiv baba is telling me you will accept it with that humility and correct yourself and you see uh, in body consciousness we are very one we are very uh, what do you say we are against this idea that somebody should correct me so when we are body conscious we resist correction we don't like it and whenever a bodily being corrects us we put our guard up and we don't want to get corrected and we take it on our ego and we take it personally this is how we've been operating in the old world but when we come to baba you see we develop this attitude that this is god this is not a human and we take corrections from baba very properly and you know baba is able to re make that correction reach our heart but sometimes along the way when we start you know distinguishing that this is something the teacher is saying not baba no the teacher is an instrument of baba <laughs> when she is saying it you have to consider that baba is saying it only then will you be able to accept it with humility and check and change and when you think you know this bodily being is telling me then you sometimes start having an ego attack and you start being defensive and you don't take that correction very well so it is baba's directions very clear in the murli that you must think always that baba is teaching you baba is correcting you even if it is brahma baba or the nimit teacher you must always consider that baba is telling you this and baba says baba doesn't tell anybody to give false praise because false praise will not make you the king of the world correcting yourself and improving yourself reforming yourself will make you the king of the world so what will false praise do if it takes you moves you away from your kingdom and your inheritance then false praise is not a good idea so this is something that baba tells us okay om shanti